Hi, I'm Rachel Cook with Brandon Hall Group, and I would like to welcome Mark Cousineau from Boeing. It's great to have you with us today. Thank you. And how are you doing? Tell us a little bit about yourself and your role at Boeing. Yeah, so um, I'm the director of learning strategy, design, and technology for the Boeing company, which means that my team uh, is the stewards of the learning strategy. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I use steward because we don't own it. If A lot of times we talk about ownership means we make all the decisions. Stewardship means we're going to work with all of our partners across the business to make sure that it's the right learning strategy for the company where we're at right now. Um, but we do the design of industrial skills, uh, technical functional skills, leadership skills, and professional development skills. So it's the, the entire gamut. Um, and uh, my team also has the technology architecture. So our learning management system, content management systems, uh, performance support systems, social collaborative platforms, things like mm -hmm. that. And also knowledge management is uh, part of the, uh, the organization. So that's what, uh, that's what uh, my organization does. And it's great to be here at Brandon Hall. We've got two teams uh, winning uh, a silver and a gold award. Congratulations. Thank you. And so brought, brought the team, some of the members of the team out here to celebrate and, uh, and then obviously learn from uh, a lot of the leaders in the industry on what's going on out there. It was interesting to hear you yesterday in our keynotes, our general session, and you were sharing a lot about strategy and the future of the workforce. Can you expand about a little bit of some of the takeaways from that conversation? Yeah, so for us, we're looking at, uh, we're kind of changing how we're going to look at learning design. Uh, traditionally, we've had instructional systems designers, learning um, solution integrators, um, we do the Addy model and waterfall and 70, 20, 10. And that, that's good, but what we're trying to shift to is more learner centric. Mm -hmm. um, and we're really framing our solutions around the five moments of need. So what are, you know, either the formal or the informal um, and, and really trying to create that entire experience for the learner. Um, and with that, we're, you know, we're, we're reshaping the roles for our, our designers and they're gonna be learning experience designers. So they're gonna they're gonna architect those experiences around this, the the student or the learner, and then we're gonna then partner with um, vendors and suppliers to help design those individual components. Then you have quite a bit of innovations going on underway. Are there any? I know a lot of it's confidential, right? But uh, everyone's curious, you know, about innovation and like really cool way out things. Or is there yeah. anything that you can reveal? Yeah, there's there's a, a number of things we're working on um, with some of our academic partners. We're looking at um, instrumenting a lot of our online environments to go to a more of an object oriented design. Mm -hmm. So rather than in the learning management system, you come into the class and it either knows if you finished it or not, and maybe a score. It's That's the level of resolution you can get out of those systems. Uh, we're looking at that object oriented design to see how does a, a learner go from content object to content object? Um, how, how long do they loiter? What do they click on while they're there? Um, how do they interact with that? Do they come back to it after they've progressed somewhere else? Mm -hmm. And that can be an indicator for us as either it's a complex topic, and so um, you know, is there cognitive overload, or the, the presentation wasn't in a way that is easily understandable by the audience. And we can look at these trajectories of students and you get thousands of students through, you can start to see patterns surface and you can see what you know students that get in the 90, 95, 99% mm -hmm. range look like compared to maybe a student that's in the 70, 60% range, marginally successful or not successful, and, and trying to start to build some adaptive engines that will look at if they start to show up in this pattern, mm -hmm. can we push them over to interact with the content in this way and help make sure they're successful, especially in a lot of these content areas where it, they all build on each other, right? You go from, um, like in an engineering area, if you go f from you know one topic, the next topic is, you know, prerequisite is you want to have a good understanding right. of that previous content. So um, we're looking at those kinds of engines and that's a heavy leveraging of artificial intelligence and we're leveraging a lot of learning science and you know, itemized response theory, cognitive load. Uh, we're working with uh, experts in visualization so we can see these these new patterns and, and help us distinguish these patterns. So um, a lot of exciting stuff we're doing in, in that space. I can see. Yeah. Yes, it's exciting, and the stakes are high, obviously, for your learners. So you're you're uh, providing them with great content, and that's important. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, 
it's not just about the content, but it's about, like I circle back to that five moments of need, right? So a lot of times we give them those classes and that's on those first two moments of need if it's something new or they're learning something more about a particular content area. Where we typically don't do a very good job in is, okay, they're back on the job and they go to apply it. How do they, you know, they and they don't remember what's that nudge that they can get. Um, or something's changed in the environment. And so what's that just update? It's mm -hmm. not necessarily go back to the class or it's just going wrong and they've got to troubleshoot and figure it out and what are those resources and that's why knowledge management is also part of my organization because that's a lot of that information that's post training support starts to get curated and cataloged and then we can surface it at that at that point of need and the need is giving it to them at the right time correct and you don't necessarily can predict what that time is but being able to have the ability to do so and the tool that they can access it which right. is so important to the learners yeah and we're, we're experimenting so there's new tools coming to the boeing uh, company for designing airplane programs and a lot of those tools are starting to have that listening capability within mm -hmm. the tool to then um, identify when a, when a uh, uh, employee is struggling in a mm -hmm. tool then that can surface to us that we can then bring the right content to them um, or looking at other tools and techniques that we can use either leveraging clients that overlay on top of the user mm -hmm. experience for the, when they're working or just through their environment natively we can somehow surface those patterns and bring that to them without them even knowing they're learning fascinating and so on another point uh talking about learning and we have an event here that we hope that we're offering an enriched learning experience. How has it been for you? It's been good. I like the uh, the opportunity, the different formats. Um, I know a lot of uh, uh, conferences, you come in and you sit down and you listen essentially to a lecture after mm -hmm. lecture after lecture and you get six or eight of those in a day and you're brain mm -hmm. dead. Um, here you get the the lightning, the tech talks, and they're nice and quick and concise, and you get a, a bunch of them rapid succession. Then you get a little bit of time to kind of soak time to think about and process mm -hmm. what you heard. Then you hear some experts. Then you have a panel, and so mm -hmm. it's it's a lot of different uh, avenues to bring that content forward, uh, and it helps not just to get that that lecture after lecture brain you know, numbingness that can happen at, at some of the okay. bigger conferences. We're trying to practice what we preach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. The learn, we know the audience, the learner, the, the, we just don't have the ability to sit in a long lecture anymore. Right. Our attention span is about this short, so we have to grab you. Right. I'm surprised and, I'm paying attention this long. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's a good cue. We, yeah. won't, we, <laughs> we only have a few more things to cover. Sure. We talked about work. We talked about the conference, the learning experience. You're winning an award and uh, being part of the community and the membership. What else do you do when you're not working? What What's your what is your passion, your hobbies? So um, I like to cook, uh, but I don't okay. like to meal plan or shop. Oh. So I have really fallen in love with those uh, those services where they they send you the meals. Uh, you Meal know, Fresh. Or yeah, like yeah, Hello Fresh or Plated or Blue Apron. Uh -huh. You know those, and we've tried them all. Have but you? I like it, yeah, because they, they, it shows up. You've got all the ingredients, but you still have to prepare it and chop it, and you still got to put a little love in it. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's way easier than you know. Right meal plan because if I had a meal plan I'd have about the six same meals every week so that's what happens in our house and we've been contemplating about trying some of them and do you, is there one more than another that you like uh, they've all got their pros and cons I know um, there's even some that are specializing like if you're now in a paleo diet or mm -hmm. um, you've got certain uh, you know ve vegan vegetarian some cater better to those than other mm -hmm. the latest one we've used is plated um, and we've liked that one so far. So I think it also varies around the country where you're at, what's available. Sure. Well, that, that's, uh, I'm glad that you mentioned that because I've been thinking about it. So it's going to prompt me after the event this week to, to test a few out because I'm the yeah. same way. There's only so much time in the day. I don't mind going to the store, but you, you know, it's time consuming. And then the thinking about the ingredients and then you buy them and then they're all like, right. if you don't, they, they go to waste, so it's right. nice to have it right there in a format, but still having it fresh. Yes. Yeah, no, I, it's, I like it. And I invariably, if I had to do my own shopping, I'd forget a key ingredient of some sort and have to run back out. So it's, it's kind of like a recipe for learning. Yeah. You can't, <laughs> there's certain things you just can't forget. Right. All right. Well, Mark, it's been a pleasure. Thank, well, thank you for you very joining much. me. And uh, thank you for being here. Thanks. I've enjoyed it. Thank you for the opportunity.